Hello. Hello. Thank you for coming in. Pleasure. Back in the mid 70s, you when you first began with Japan, um, why did you actually call the band Japan? Well, it's the same situation that most bands find themselves in. You're offered your first gig and you realize you don't have a name for the band. Japan was pulled out of the hat. None of us really liked the name. Uh, we all thought, well, it'll do for one night, we'll change it later. And we never got around to changing it. Um, we knew nothing about the country or the culture. It was really just an image, a vague image. It meant something different to each of us, I think. And it also probably caused some sort of confusion to people on this side of the world as to who was this band with this name that, that certainly well didn't Japanese. look Japanese. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I suppose it actually helped you in Japan. Well, it was a strange beginning because uh, first of all, we couldn't get a record deal in Japan. They refused to release the record because they said, well, nobody's going to be interested in an English band called Japan, you know. And finally, they, they were persuaded to release the record. Uh, I think there was a... Uh, a mixture of feelings from the public, you know, some people wasn't sure what to expect, other people picked up on it immediately. But it was the first country we were successful in, I suppose. Mm. So it did, I suppose, have uh, some beneficial um, influence on the public. But I think basically we were, we were popular in Japan because of the image of the band. I mean, it was quite a striking image at that point in time. Mm. And generally in Japan you sell records through magazines, not through airplay or TV shows. It's the magazines have the major influence there. So if you have a, a strong image, you're going to sell records. It's, it's as simple as that, basically. And being photogenic helps. It helps. <laughs> That's right. Uh, is it true that um, all the members in, in the band had no uh, prior uh, musical training? No. Yeah, none of us had any training at all. That's um, pretty extraordinary because you imagine you ima managed to become very inventive and uh, and certainly very skilled musicians in a very short space of time. Um, yeah, skilled to a degree, <coughs> uh, but the fact that we we had no um, training, I think, left us more scope to find ourselves within. Well, especially the rest of the band, find their own characters, their own styles uh, within within the instruments themselves. I think when you are taught, you're, you tend to um, begin to feel confined at some point by the technique uh, you're learning. Um, I don't think they ever felt uh, inhibited in that way. I think they began to discover uh, their own particular styles relatively early on in time. So I, can, I think it was quite a positive thing. And the fact that we were growing and learning together was, was very interesting. I mean, we made a lot of mistakes in public, the first two albums being uh, good examples of that. But um, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't change anything now. I mean, it was a great... Uh, education, great learning period working uh, with Japan. Mm. And but you're still working with certainly two of the members now. Mm. But I st I've been working with um, yeah, Steve and Rich have been working on my projects. I've been working with Mick on his album. So I mean, oh, that's good. we keep in touch. You know, there's still a crossover happening. Would it surprise you if I said to you in the two years that I've been presenting this program that I've had many more letters to uh, requests to see you and Japan than any other band. Yes. <laughs> it's, it's truly, surprising, yes. Yeah. And I still, still now all the time, mm. um, which is interesting, mostly from, from fairly young viewers, I guess, mm -hmm. which is really nice. Um, but you've never come to this country with Japan. Why did you never think of touring here when you were so close, when you were in, J in Japan itself? Um... I suppose one is the financial reasons. Um, the reason we used to go to Japan quite often was because, despite the fact that we found the place very interesting, it was our financial support for many years. It was the only country we were selling records in. And we had to go back there at least once a year to tour to make money so that we could continue doing the kind of things we wanted to do. Mm. And actually just surviving, paying the rent, you know, it was that simple. Um, I guess, for me anyway, you tend to need a focal point to, to visit a country. I mean, if, if you decide to go somewhere, there has to be a reason to go there. There has to be something that attracts you about the place. It's only relatively recently that I've found something here that made me want to, to come here and visit the place. Um, and what's that? Um, it's, it's an interest in the, in, the, um, in the music of the Aborigines, I think. Mm, I um, thought you'd say that. It's, that's, it's, it's, there's a project I'm thinking of taking on that... Um, could benefit from my learning a little something about uh, the Aborigines' way of life, uh, traditional way of life, and the music. Mm. So you're planning to go to Central Australia? I wanted to, haven't had time. But I, I think if I do record the project I'm thinking of, I'll record some of it here and hopefully get the time to, to, to visit um, some of those mm. I wanted to visit. You obviously are affected by other cultures, Africa 
and, and Asia. Mm. <clears throat> How important are, are, is travel to you? Travel used to be very important to me. Um, you can be filled with ideas, um, very vague ideas for, for material, for, for whatever, uh, but they tend, you tend to have trouble bringing them to the surface, bringing them into a, some kind of form. And travel used to just tip the scale slightly. They used to, it used to bring out uh, the ideas in a, in a more concrete form, if you like. Um, through the experience of travelling, through uh, visiting places or whatever, they could suddenly stimulate the idea and bring it to light, you know, uh, and clarify the whole thing in your mind. So I used to travel a lot because of that, basically. I haven't travelled in the past... I haven't travelled much in the past two years because I've been in the studio or, or writing material, and I haven't felt such a need to travel. i found there's a source within me now that I can tap more readily. I think that's because I'm working on material and in an area that's very close to my heart and um, it's very natural for me to write now it's not something I have to work at um, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy with that I mean it, it's nice to be able to, to, to be in your own environment and I mean it's my most prolific period so it says something about um, the, my frame of mind at this point in time mm. uh, so you are now becoming a more spontaneous writer I think so yeah yeah um, Still, there's a... It must be wonderful to be able to tap exactly yes. what you feel and to be able to put it down. Well, it, it, yes, <clears> I understand <throat> what I'm aiming towards a lot, a lot more than I used to. I mean, everything's a lot clearer now. Every, things seem to work in a very logical way now. Um, still, the, the, the writing process is very slow. I mean, uh, from the very beginning, which the beginning of a song tends to be a, a, a phrase that comes to mind accompanied by some kind of atmosphere or emotional feeling, something of some kind. Um, and then it, I can leave that in my mind to mature, if you like, for anything from a week, two weeks to months, you know, three or four months, before actually sitting down in front of a piano with a guitar to actually try and put it into some kind of musical framework. Um, so the process is still very slow, but I understand it now. I understand the process. I understand really what I'm looking for when I get the original idea I can understand where it's heading and a reason for creating it. Well, when I was younger, it was, it was, I worked kind of a lot more on instinct without the intellectual side of the understanding of what I was aiming towards. Mm. You know. mm, I think it, it really does show, actually. Mm. It seems to me now that it's very important to you that you um, communicate to the listener what you're feeling. It's become more and more important. Um, I found with Japan towards the end um, too much of the valuable content, or what I felt was the valuable content of, the, of both lyrics and music, uh, was buried beneath imagery, too much imagery. And you could say the visual image got in the way as well, because I think people tend to stop at the, at the image either of the band or of the music. They don't tend to look any deeper because it's enough for them. Um, it's very easy. It makes life very easy for people if they've got something there presented for them in a, in a kind of package. They don't have to do too much work. Um, mm -hmm. to, to enjoy that music. Mm -hmm. If it's made a little more difficult for them, people either lose interest or th those that don't lose interest and, and decide to take it that much further find the experience that much more rewarding. And what I've tried to do is break down those barriers between artists and audience, which can be just, first of all, the very simple fact of the, the, the visual image. And then the imagery within the music, within the lyrics, I've broken that imagery down. It's, I try to write um, on a very basic level. Um, I don't write about personal experiences so much as the, the emotions and thoughts that accompany the experience, so that there's a kind of universal quality to the lyrics. People don't relate it directly to me and think, oh, that's what I've been through. I hope people can relate it to their own lives. I think that's very important. And musically, I've, I've broken down the, the decoration that you tend to find a great deal of in, in pop music, because pop music is basically trying to capture the, the listener's attention in the shortest span of time possible. And there is a lot of superfluous melodies or whatever, decoration, generally in pop music, because of that. And so it's been a slow process of trying to break all those elements down. And it can be very difficult to be very objective about that at times. Mm. I think, yes, obviously, you know, you've gone from writing somewhat obscure lyrics to something which is much more explicit. I think it's probably why Ghosts was so very popular, successful, mm. is because it's something that everyone could really identify with. Yeah, I, I think so. It's, I think that was the first time I, I, I managed to write a, a more honest lyric, if you like. Um, 
Also, the, the framework of the song allowed me a lot of freedom. Working within uh, the kind of classical ballad form allowed me a great deal of freedom because everybody knows roughly how, how that, that form works. You know, everybody knows verse, bridge, chorus. And if you work within a very simple form like that, you, you can take a lot more liberties with the arrangement of the piece of music because you can take all the pillars of support, but people still recognize the outline of the form. Mm. I think that was another reason why it was successful. People could still recognize the ballad mm. within the arrangement.